of the Municipality of North Perth, held on Monday, May 4th, 2020. I'm Mayor Todd Kaysenberg, and I'll call this meeting to order. I ask the Deputy Clerk to note our starting time for the minutes is 7 p.m. Today's meeting is being streamed live on the Municipality of North Perth YouTube channel and will be available there after the meeting as an archived video with apparently some extra music accompaniment mm -hmm. and, uh, and other interesting interactions before we begin. Anyone who is invited to speak will be recorded and their voice, image, and comments will form part of the live stream. The chair and or the clerk have the discretion and authority at any time to direct the termination or interruption of live streaming. Such direction will only be given in exceptional circumstances where deemed relevant. Circumstances may include instances content of debate is considered misleading, defamatory, or potentially inappropriate to be published. Thank you. Welcome to those joining us via the YouTube channels. Welcome to counselors tonight. I will admit that I miss being in your physical presence and look forward to seeing many of you face to face in the near future. I'll just uh, ask for a bit of patience and forgiveness for any technical problems that might occur this evening. Patience and forgiveness remain key concepts right now and I encourage these in our very changed lives. The staff continues to do great work. I also want to bring to our collective attention tonight the work of Community Development Coordinator Kim Couch and CAO Chris Snell in getting us to rapid deployment of the new e-marketplace for local businesses called Shop Local North Perth. And a hat tip to our hardworking IT team that have been providing a platform with their behind the scenes efforts that keep staff and counselors working. Our community is looking quite good as spring comes on. Thanks to the operations team for the street sweeping and to staff working to polish up our community for the spring and summer months. There are many, many heroes on our staff team. You know who you are. And on behalf of council, I express our continuing appreciation. Now I'll, sim I'll simply ask, please spend a few moments contributing to making North Perth proud. These days, most of that happens in your own household in ways like picking up some outdoor litter, perhaps or tidying up your garden beds, or putting a coat of paint on the door or window frame that needs it. All these little actions make North Perth such a great place to live. Let us move then to item 2.1 on our agenda pertaining to pecuniary interest. I don't believe we've had any indication before this meeting from councillors pertaining to this, uh, but at this time, if any councillor wishes to declare pecuniary interest, or at any time, of course, during the meeting, uh, you may so declare and act as appropriate. Uh, at this time, uh, if you have a desire to declare a pecuniary interest, uh, please uh, write a note to the clerk in the chat box. I'll wait for a moment. And the clerk indicates we've had no such indications. So let's just explain again our virtual processes. I will be systematically trying to seek consent from various councillors as movers and seconders of the various resolutions and bylaws that are put before us tonight. I will do this alphabetically, but I'll shake things up and we'll start mid-list just for a change. Uh, should a councillor not wish to respond to the request, they may say so, and I will move to the next name on the alphabetical list. Regarding speaking to our business, councillors tonight will identify themselves through our conferencing technologies chat function. The clerk is assisting me tonight in maintaining the speaking order from that source. Councillors are allowed on their turn to deliver a primary question or comment and may make one supplemental. We will follow speaking order carefully and any councillor wishing to have a second say will have to indicate again through that chat window and go to the bottom of the speaker's list. This is a normal process consistent with Robert's rules of order. Councillors are reminded that if I believe you are not audible, I will call on you. I'll let you know. You do not need to ask if you can be heard. I'll let you know. Counselors are further asked to maintain a mute state in the web conference until I have called upon you, should I need to, for a verbal reaction. Should any of your votes not show up in eScribe, our electronic meeting software, I will call on you when things seem stalled to register a manual vote. At that time, take yourself off mute, answer yes or no on the motion, then return to mute. That brings us to item 2.2 of our agenda. I have a motion before me for the adoption of tonight's, tonight's meeting agenda that reads as follows. That the agenda for tonight's meeting be approved 
Can I call on Deputy Mayor Kellum to be our mover for that? Yes, sir, you, Mayor Kaysenberg, I will move that motion. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Richardson, would you serve as our seconder? Through you, Mayor Kaysenberg, I would uh, second that motion. Okay. Any discussion or debate, please so indicate in the chat window. And the clerk indicates there is not a desire to speak, so let's have that vote. Uh, okay, so we're missing votes from Councillor Andreessen. What say you? Yes, I'm in favor. Thank you, and that is it. I think Councillor Johnston is absent at this hour, but he expects to attend a little bit later in the meeting. Uh, so that, with that, the motion is carried. That brings us to item three on our agenda, the so-called consent agenda. These items are placed on our agenda because they are grouped, uh, because they're they are believed to be, sorry, not contentious, yet they require council's approval. Uh, grouping them expedites our business. However, any councillor wishing to extract an item from the consent agenda for discussion, debate, and individual action may do so, and uh, we'll figure out how to put that forward. I know uh, there are five items on our consent agenda tonight, including the minutes of the last regular council meeting, and I know that Councillor Behrens has expressed a desire to address uh, three five specifically. So what I propose from a procedural perspective is uh, any councillor wishing to address any other item uh, on the consent agenda, please indicate your desire through the chat window to the clerk. Okay, so seeing none, um, I think our, our suggested process tonight is um, that we actually deal with all five items on the consent agenda and then deal separately with the matter that Councillor Behrens has uh, asked to have added to our agenda. So uh, I'll read the resolution regarding the consent agenda, that consent items 3.1 to 3.5 be received for information, and the minutes of the April 27, 2020 regular council meeting and the April 27, 2020 special council meeting be adopted. Can I call on Councillor Rothwell to be our mover for that? Yes, I will move. The Thank approval. you. Thank you, and Councillor Seiler. Need you off mute, Councillor Seiler. Yes, I will second that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So as I said, um, Councillor Behrens has expressed a desire to have a specific resolution related to item 3.5, but that shouldn't stop us from moving forward with our resolution uh, for the consent agenda. Um, so if you'll, uh, if there's any debate or discussion, uh, please so indicate in the chat window. So seeing none, the resolution pertaining to the uh, receipt uh, for information of the um, consent agenda can be put to us. If you will, please. And that is carried. Thank you. And now I know, as I said, that uh, Councillor Behrens has asked specifically in advance of the meeting uh, to address item 3.5. Um, Councillor Behrens, did you want to speak to this uh, this issue? Uh, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I simply would ask for support for 3.5. It is a resolution from the Township of Armour, and it is talking with regards to rural high-speed internet. Um, I'm sure in these... Uh, times we've all realized, even ourselves personally, with the electronic council meetings, the challenges that go on in rural Ontario. I know we will get another kick at the cat at this, uh, probably after some debriefing and that from all agencies. But I think any time that we can, it's important to support connectivity um, for our businesses, for our residents, uh, especially for our students, and for the municipality as a whole. So I simply would ask for support and I would move that. Thank you. So uh, moved by Councillor Behrens, I'm going to read the resolution the clerk has kindly drafted for our consideration that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth supports the resolution from the Township of Armour regarding the need to increase high-speed internet connectivity in rural Ontario. 
and further that this resolution be forwarded to John Nader, MP, and Randy Pettipiece, MPP, of Wellington. Uh, that's moved by Councillor Barons. Councillor Andreessen, can I call on you to second that one? Yes, I'll second that motion. Thank you very much. Any discussion or debate? If you're interested in such, please demonstrate your interest to the clerk through the chat window. Seeing none, I think we have that resolution queued up for vote. Um, yes, so let's have that vote. And that is carried as well. Thank you, Council. <clears throat> that brings us now to um, agenda item four. Uh, at this time, we have no public meetings. Uh, hearings or delegations for tonight's meeting. Um, so that will move us on to agenda item number five. Uh, for agenda item 5.1, we have no written reports emanating from the CAO's office, but as we have done through most of the COVID period, uh, we've invited the CAO to give us a verbal report should he so wish. So uh, Mr. Snell, would you like to uh, provide a, a short report to council? Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Madam Council. Good evening. So I'll, I'll just begin by um, what we had at 5 p.m. earlier tonight, our first successful virtual town hall meeting. We had um, chaired by the mayor and all department heads in attendance with other um, key staff through the, through the emergency. And um, just give a brief synopsis of every department's um, role and how their operations are unfolding to date. That, um, was videoed and will be available on our website tomorrow. And we had um, about 20 um, to 23 individuals from the, from the um, public attending um, that at, at one point. Second um, on the list is we have had um, our daycare up and running since last Wednesday. And as of today, um, Pat has informed me that we have reached our capacity of 25. Um, so, um, we, things are progressing smoothly. All staff are, have been provided and are wearing the um, appropriate PPE as per, provided and prescribed by the public health. Um, the rest of our operations continue to run um, normally, um, but we are starting sort of the, re the recovery phase of, of the emergency. Um, as council is aware, um, the province has started to open things up, so we are now just trying to plan for what our return to services look like, both for our community and for our corporation. That's really, that's my update for tonight. Thank you, Mayor. I'll take any questions. Thanks, CEO Snell. Anyone have questions they'd like to address to CEO Snell at this point? If so, please indicate through the chat window to the clerk. We acknowledge that Councillor Johnston has arrived to the meeting. Thank you and welcome, Dave. Um, anyone with questions for the CAO at this point? Okay, seeing none, let's move to item uh, 5.2, uh, reports from the clerk's department. For item 5.2.1, we are asked to consider a site plan application from Ball Construction on behalf of ABH Development Corporation Senior Equipment Limited. I'll ask a workforce planner, Sean Yilmaz, for an introduction to this matter. Welcome, Sean. Thank you, uh, and good evening, Mayor Kaysenberg, members of council. I hope everyone is doing well. Site plan application SP9-2019, submitted by ABH Development Corporation and Premier Equipment Limited, is proposing an expansion of the existing farm implement sales and service operation on the subject property. Premier Equipment currently operates the existing agricultural equipment supply and service business. However, the business is experiencing growth pressures and is looking to expand operations. The proposed expansion includes an approximately 2,800 square meter or 30,000 square foot building as expected to become the main building for the operation and will include offices, a dealership showroom, as well as service and repair base. The property is municipally known as 8475 Road 164 
which is located on the east side of Road 164, um, also known as Highway 23, just north of the Listowel urban boundary. The subject property has approximately 292 meters or 960 feet of public road frontage and has a lot area of 4.4 hectares or 10.8 acres. The subject property is within the agricultural commercial industrial zone um, and has special provisions identified as ACM-14. The site specific zone permits an agricultural parts business and accessory uses. The municipality's chief building official, fire chief, public works and the North Perth planner have reviewed the site plan drawing as prepared by Ball Construction the drawing contains the information required for a complete review, adequate parking, access, fire protection, lot grading, and drainage are provided, as shown on the site plan. Uh, additionally, the Ministry of Transportation has also reviewed the application as it is located on a provincial highway. The Ministry has no concerns and a permit is required from the MTO prior to works commencing. Uh, as such, it is staff's recommendation that the council proceed with the adoption of the bylaw, authorizing the mayor and clerk to enter into a new site plan agreement and to have it registered on title. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Uh, councillors, if you have questions about this application before we put a resolution on the floor, um, please indicate through the chat function in your uh, WebEx interface. So we're not seeing any questions. So I have a resolution for our consideration and then a bylaw. Uh, the resolution reads as follows. That the Council of the Municipality of North Perth approve site plan application SP9-2019 prepared by Ball Construction on behalf of ABH Development Corp. Premier affecting <laughs> property described as part lot 24, concession three, part one of 44R3292 and part five of 44R3395, 8475 Road 164 in the Wallace Ward, and that council proceed with the adoption of the bylaw authorizing the mayor and clerk to enter into a new site plan agreement and have it registered on title of the subject. I call on Councillor Anstett to be our mover for that one. Mr. Anstett. Yes, I'll move that. Thank you. And Councillor Duncan is our seconder. So moved, so seconded. Thank you. Okay, any discussion or debate on this uh, resolution? Please indicate to the clerk through the chat function. No, seeing no indication of same. Have that. We are going to do, okay, there's one. We're looking for Councillor Johnston. Councillor Johnston, uh, we don't have you in East Crab yet, it seems. What say you? Favor. Thank you. And so that is carried. And now for the bylaw, uh, we have uh, uh, as follows proposed to our attention. Uh, that bylaw number 62-2020 being a bylaw to authorize the signing of a site plan agreement with ABH Development Corporation be introduced, read and considered read a first, second and third time and be finally passed and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Johnston to be our mover for that one? Yes, I would move that. Thank you. And Deputy Mayor Kellum, would you serve as our seconder? Mayor Mayor Kaysenberg, yes, it will. Wonderful. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. Uh, for item 5.2.2, North Perth Planner uh, Sean Yilmaz will provide a formal update on the planning department. Mr. Yilmaz, welcome again. 
Yes, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to take this opportunity to provide Council with a brief update on planning matters and where we are today. Uh, as many of us are aware, the province declared a state of emergency back in March through Ontario Regulation 7320. As a result of this regulation, all timelines under the Planning Act were effectively suspended. Uh, during the first month of the emergency order, not much else was released by the province regarding planning, and subsequently, Planning Act applications were put into somewhat of a, a hiatus. Most municipalities and, and planning departments were unclear on how to proceed um, and if it was even possible to host a public meeting during an emergency order. Since that time, the Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing has released regulations and special interpretation bulletins to assist municipalities with addressing planning related matters during a state of emergency. Um, it is now clear that municipalities have the option to move forward with planning applications or hold off on making decisions until after the emergency has ended. If municipalities wish to make decisions on applications during this time, they are free to do so. However, municipal councils need to decide whether they can adequate, adequately review and process planning applications and to hold statutory public meetings. Uh, of course, we need to consider the advice of Ontario's Chief Medical uh, Officer of Health with regard to physical distancing and any other relevant orders under the Emergency Management and Civil Protection Act. With that, though, the province announced that municipalities can consider meeting the Planning Act's requirement using electronic and virtual channels to engage and solicit feedback from the public in an effort to maintain physical distancing. Um, this may include a mixture of technologies to meet local public needs, for example, using WebEx with Instant Messenger, Zoom, or a moderated teleconference line, um, as well as with traditional forms such as written submissions. Staff has met on several occasions to discuss the advancement of planning applications and potentially hosting virtual public meetings. We have also looked for examples from other municipalities with only a few establishing approach, an approach at this time. There are many, many considerations and if public meetings are to commence, it will likely have to have a made in North approach as there is a, not a one size fits all solution. Uh, internal staff discussions have been helpful, but this is really at the discretion of this council and if this council feels comfortable proceeding with virtual public meetings. Staff has not yet identified a comprehensive approach as this will involve several departments and likely the county's input, but I wanted to get the discussion ro rolling with this council. We currently have three zoning bylaw amendment applications that are ready to go, uh, as well as two joint applications with the County of Perth that could advance shortly. This is also in addition to several outstanding minor variance applications of which a committee of adjustment meeting was canceled. Again, this is at this council's discretion and is based on your comfort level. Staff is willing to work on a process that can be implemented if council elects to do so. Um, I don't have a, a formal rec recommendation tonight, but I thought this update would be helpful to at least get the conversation started. Uh, I will leave it there for now and uh, hopefully you can address any questions or concerns that council may have. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. So um, yes, of course, councillors have noticed that uh, we have uh, avoided um, item four on our agenda for a few weeks now um, because uh, there are there was a desire to wait for the province to issue some guidance and, uh, and to develop an approach uh, that, that can work and that is respectful of the transparency and public nature of these processes that, that uh, must be undertaken. Um, I, I think I'm gonna propose just gently then that we relax the rules to allow councillors to just speak to uh, the, the questions associated with whether we should move forward with virtual public meetings and I can invite staff of course then to create a protocol for us or whether we should hold off a little bit further and, and wait until the emergency period potentially is over. Uh, so 
those who would like to speak to this, um, again, it's just we're, we're idea generating and, and input seeking from you. And uh, the clerk is, is taking the speaker's list at this point. So if you'd like to speak to it, uh, please uh, enter your indication in the chat box for our files to monitor. Um, I think, Pat, you have one person already. Mr. Rothwell, please. Thanks, Mayor Kaysenberg, and uh, thank you, Sean. Uh, I would have uh, liked to have seen a, a written report on this issue uh, because it, it does have uh, a lot of uh, uh, repercussions and we're being asked to consider uh, whether we want to change uh, approach here as uh, we are under these uncertain times. Um, I believe that it would be appropriate uh, that uh, whatever we're doing here in North Perth uh, we look uh, at uh, in conjunction, as I said before, with uh, both the county and our local municipalities, uh, because we do have uh, property owners that uh, are on uh, different sides of our boundaries, which are uh, looking at uh, making applications from time to time uh, in each jurisdiction. But uh, as I say, it's not, uh, I think it would have been appropriate if we had a written report, because frankly, I wasn't exactly sure what we were anticipating in terms of uh, the planning update here. So. I'm in favor of looking at uh, us moving forward to uh, having uh, virtual uh, town hall meetings provided we have uh, appropriate uh, procedures in place, but I would not want to see us do that solely on our own because uh, we do have implications both at the county and our, and our other member municipalities. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Rothwell. And I'm going to recognize uh, uh, Clerk Fairfield. She'd, she'd like to address this as well. Just give me one second to mute myself so that we don't get terrible squealing in the audio feed. Go ahead. So thank you, Councillor Rothwell, for your comments. Um, I did not have the opportunity to see our planner, Sean Ilmes, to make um, to prepare a report. I just wanted an update. We have talked about this at great length. We, at this point in time, have not even received a lot of um, concern or comment from any of our developers. So I think tonight what Sean and my are asking, does North Council have an action to proceed? I, as your clerk, I'm very, very um, concerned and cautious with moving forward with a public process. And as you know, I don't want to be that clerk in front of the Umpqualam in a month. So before we just spend a lot of time in the media and report, which definitely will come to council, we first just wanted to make sure that your appetite was there, realizing that we don't have a lot to go on. Um, we have the city of Kitchen that we're favoring what they're doing um, as well, but our neighbors in regards to our other first county municipalities, um, we, no one has really stepped out too far. So we just want to make sure we have your support and we will be bringing back to you. Thank you. Councillor Rothwell, do you have a supplemental? I guess I'm, I'm looking. No, at I don't, uh, Mayor Todd. Uh, I just uh, note that it, the sound is very garbled. So I, I believe I heard everything that uh, Clerk Garfield said, but it, the sound was very garbled. I'm not sure as to whether she was being picked up twice on the microphone, but uh, it was very garbled. Thank you. Bad mayor. Yeah. Okay. Um, so next, I think, on the speaking list is Councillor Richardson. Uh, thank you, uh, everyone. I would like to um, also, uh, I guess, reiterate uh, Councillor Rothwell's report there for her statement of saying that we do need to be cautious about going forward with this, but I also think that it's an absolute necessity because there's an awful lot of variables with this entire situation that we don't know, um, even though we don't have a lot of information coming from the province yet about how to actually go about doing it. I do think that that uh, bush needs to be beat, so to speak, so because we don't know what the future holds for this. Uh, there's been not being doom and gloom by any means, but we don't know second wave or anything like that. But if we don't have anything at least in place, let's hope that we don't necessarily have the opportunity to use it. But I do think that a little bit of legwork and groundwork needs to be commenced prior in order to get that in place um, to, to look at how, how we can go about um, hosting some public meetings virtually. 
because we don't know what the future will hold, but we also know that we cannot, um, I guess, hold entire progress up uh, because we don't necessarily have uh, things in place at this point in time. I would like to see a little bit of work done on it. Um, and at least, but I think it's something to at least have in our back pocket. If we happen to need it, we have it. Um, but for something like that, I think we need to go ahead and uh, I support ongoing conversations with how we can make that happen effectively and fairly for everyone concerned. Thanks, Councillor Richardson. Next up is Councillor Behrens. Yes, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I, too, think that um, I agree with Councillor Richardson that we need to probably start looking at or developing a new process. Um, we could be under the guidelines of social distancing for some time, and even when they are um, released, may be put back in this situation again with the social distancing. So somehow we have to develop some sort of process to keep moving um, the planning process forward. But my other concern would be, I would like a little bit of work done on the legality of it, because we can foresee things coming up that people didn't have the technology, and yes, they could um, put it in in writing, but it, I just wonder about the legality, and um, I don't want to be doing this and then end up in front of LPAT all the time. So those are my main two concerns. We develop a process um, that we're going to move in the future, and also the legality in LPAT. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Behrens. Um, you, I can tell you that the clerk has been nodding her head up and down in, in this uh, during your comments. So thank you. Um, next is Councillor Andreessen. Hi, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, generally, I'm in favor in moving forward with um, having public meetings for this purpose. Um, just to echo a little bit of. Um, Mayor Bierne's thoughts. Um, I just want to make sure that somehow we can provide equity to all residents so that they have the ability to share their concerns or share the fact that they may be in favor of such planning proposals. Um, and uh, it is true that we can recognize that not all residents have appropriate technology or perhaps the the uh, skills to, to work through this type of process. So it would be very important that um, moving forward, we find different ways to make it accessible to all types of residents, um, those with technology, those without, um, so that we provide a very equitable approach. And that would be my comments at this point. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Councillor Andreessen. Um, agreed. Uh, Councillor Seiler. Thank you, Mayor Todd. I got uh, one question for Clerk Bearfelts. Um, would it be possible to have the comments made to you and you disperse them to us if we're going to have a public meeting? Yes, Councillor Seiler, that's exactly some of the comments that we've been making amongst staff and reiterating exactly what Councillor Behrens and Andreessen has commented, that our concern is for those people that do not have the technology or the ability um, in making it equitable. So one of the things would be to encourage anyone that would like to provide their comments, concerns, cautions with, um, would send them to me in writing and we wouldn't just accept them in writing. What I think would be appropriate is that I would actually read them aloud. Thank you, Clerk Berfeldt. Um My opinion, I think we have to be very careful on how we do this. Uh, public meetings are very important and we wanna make sure we do it right. So hopefully we will get some guidance from the province more on this and hopefully maybe they will have, have something that we can work on and make sure we do this right. It's 
it's a benefit to all municipalities. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Seiler. It, it seems the province has been fairly slow to respond in this particular field. I think there was certainly um, a concern that there were bigger fish to fry earlier on in the uh, pandemic period, but uh, and so I'm not sure that the province is going to actually clarify what technology stacks and, and stuff, but you can be assured, I think, that the province still expects us to, to as uh, both Councillor Behrens and Andreessen have talked about, uh, make equitable access um, to all citizens who wish to respond to a request for comments and input uh, into the system. So um, uh, I think it sounds to me like, generally speaking, uh, there is consent from council for staff to do more work on this and to bring forward a report which uh, considers both the, um, the, the technology and, and our readiness for it, but perhaps more importantly, the uh, full range of, uh, of legal implications and requirements that are, are in, in our place uh, to support us um, getting this done right and, um, and making it right for our citizens and, um, and our businesses who are seeking these approvals of various sorts. So um, in, if you have significant objection to us moving forward to asking staff to prepare that report, uh, please indicate it through the chat window and then we can recognize uh, you to speak. But otherwise I think what we'll do is we'll assume that there's consent given for staff to dig deeper and across the, the themes that have been spoken about in this uh, Last real session. Anyone wish to speak again or further? No, uh, thanks, Mayor Todd. I'm, I'm fine with that. No, I just want to, I have no problem with that. Just we have to make sure we do, we do our homework right on this and get it down right the first time. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, we'll just assume then that um, consent is given. Uh, we haven't seen any uh, loud shouts in the chat box. So uh, on we move to item uh, 5.2.3. In this item, the clerk seeks authorization for council to sign a number of agreements of drainage reapportionment. I'll ask North Perth Clerk Patricia Bearfelds for an introduction to this matter. Uh, Ms. The following two reports have been prepared by Danette, and these are in regards to drainage reapportionments that are conditions of land severances. The first one is dealing with the, um, I believe it's six, eight applications that we've received for land severance, and that the um, landowners need to move forward with paying the costs for reapportionment for drainage. And uh, I'd like Council to consider um, the first one as an update. The second report is dealing with the fact that one of the land severances had lapsed and there had to be a redo if I can, and that is there for council consideration as well. Okay, so um, I have uh, any, any questions for the clerk? You can put those in the chat box if you like. Essentially, I guess there's two related motions under two separate items of business on the agenda, so we'll just take them back to back. Um, and let them uh, consider. Anyone have a question or comment? Okay, seeing none at this point, um, first resolution uh, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth authorizes the clerk to sign the agreements of drainage reapportionment affecting the following municipal drains. One, drain 86, branch C, closed portion, municipal drain walls. Two, drain 86, branch C, open portion, municipal drain walls. Three, drain number 86, municipal drain Wallace. Four, Ellis Maitland Relief, municipal drain Elma. Five, Wilkin, municipal drain Wallace. Six, Coleman, municipal drain Elma. And seven, Drager, municipal drain Elma. Can I invite uh, Councillor Richardson to be our mover for that? I will move that, thank you. And uh, Councillor Rothwell, can I ask you to serve as our seconder for that? I will second the motion. Thank you. Now, Council, any discussion or debate or questions at this point in time? Okay, so I will note that Councillor Johnston has declared a potential uh, conflict of pecuniary interest uh, with regards to two of these drains, so he will not be participating in the voting on this matter. 
Any other comments or questions at this point? Discussion or debate? Seeing none, let's have the vote. Councillor Barons, we're not seeing your vote. I'll see you. I am in favor. Thank you, and that is carried. Uh, that brings us to the next related item, which is sorry, I'm not sure. Let's skip over the right papers here. Um, item 5.2.4, Council, the resolution proposed for our consideration that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth rescinds agreements of drainage reapportionment affecting the Gernhelder Municipal Drain. Elma and the Ellis Maitland Relief Municipal Drain Elma signed by the clerk on April 8, 2019. And I call on Councillor Siler to be our mover for that one. Yes, I will move that. Thank okay. you. And Councillor Andreessen, will you serve as our seconder? Yes, for you, May Mayor Kaysenberg, I'll second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this one? Please indicate your interest in same through the chat window to the clerk. So we're not seeing any, uh, so let's have that vote. And Councillor Barron's, we're still not seeing your vote registered through eScribe. What say you? I'm in favor. Thank you, and that is carried then. Uh, that brings us to item... 5.2.5. For Council's earlier action on this matter, we are now seeing a revised draft of a property standards bylaw for North Perth. I'll invite Clerk Bearfelt to provide her comments on where we are with this matter tonight and propose that we relax the rules at least a little bit to have a discussion about this draft. We do need a process that will support us moving forward, which I will propose after our discussion collects your ideas. Uh, at this point and questions at this point. You'll note that we have uh, joining us at our meeting tonight, our bylaw enforcement uh, officer and our chief building official to act as technical support for any discussion, questions or comments that you have. So at this point, uh, let me get my settings right here so that we don't create terrible feedback and we'll call on Clerk Bearfells to introduce this matter. So, Council, um, before you tonight, we have a draft um, property standards bylaw. Um, even though this may be difficult to um, get all the opinions put forward, but I, I think we can can work at it um, in regards to the, the public as well as Council and the Property Standards Committee. Um, we're now moving into prime property standards time, as we call it, that this is when we hear a lot from the public and when the concerns come forward, not that they don't all winter, but the, the spring and summer are usually very busy times for us. Um, and we've been working on it, as you can see by my report, for some time. <coughs> we did meet last June and October with the Property Standards Committee. They brought forward their concerns and their um, questions on behalf of the community, which we talked at great length and we've done some research on. Um, we've looked at other bylaws. We've gone to similar size municipalities as we've gone as well into looking at city bylaws for what they're doing. And before you tonight is actually moving forward with the template that is provided by OAPSO that we're knowing we're staying within the, the regulations that they're putting out. What I'd like to do tonight is present it to you. Um, it's in, like I said, a draft. It's presently being reviewed by legal counsel. Um, and I actually have some comments back today, but unable to provide that to you tonight. Um, and then I'd like to have council have some more time looking at it, presenting it to um, the local residents in regards to their comments um, as, as well. So what we'd like to do from tonight, and I'm hoping that our local um, CTNX as well as the Lisbo banners will tune in and hoping that they'll take the opportunity to let the community know that we are moving forward with a revised bylaw. 
as staff, we would be happy to um, email this to anyone in the community that would like to have um, a look at it. We'd be willing to offer it at the front door and uh, set it outside for them if they're unable to find it via um, the electronic means. Um, and I'd like to mentioned earlier by Mayor Kaysenberg that I've actually got um, Ed Podnowitz and Marita here with us to answer any questions. They're the experts in regards to these two acts moving forward with the property standards and I certainly rely on their expertise. So as said, we did make mention in my report that we'd like to bring it back in May 25th. Working today with the Mayor and the CAO, we'd like to suspend that um, at least another week so that you as council can have more time with it. If you want to wait and hear from um, our North Perth residents and constituents, that would provide you with some more time and opportunities to provide your comments to us. Coming back on the 25th with um, any changes or any comments that have been provided, and then hopefully moving forth in June the 1st with the adoption. Following the adoption of this bylaw, our true goal is to um, ramp up on our public education, our time spent with the non-compliant properties, as well as you can see on the end of the bylaw, we have provided now more fines, more opportunities to, um, to um, find people that choose not to be compliant. And unfortunately, we do have those people, but prior to putting all of that out there, we'd like to have more of an opportunity for public education. And in fact, one of the public, ed public education components would be by providing a PIC, an opportunity that people could actually come in and talk with us, go over the bylaw, and have a better understanding of what our expectations are. As you know, part of the budget was providing our department with a full-time bylaw enforcement officer beyond the part-time um, opportunity that we have today. And if we can keep moving this forward, and that's the reason I'm bringing it to you now, I'd like to keep moving it forward so that we can get the bylaw adopted. It takes a while to get the um, fines approved by the Crown Attorney. And in order for um, the bylaw department to have something to work with, I was hoping to move on. Not being disrespectful to any type of public information, um, but I think working with the media and with yourselves, Councillor, I'm hoping we can move forward. I'd be happy to answer any questions, as well as Marita and Ed, as I mentioned, are here to assist us with that. Okay, so uh, I, I trust that you understand the process that the clerk has now described to you. Uh, the purpose of introducing this in tonight's agenda is to collect top-level input from you and answer any first questions, immediate questions that you have that arise from your reading of the draft of this bylaw. Then the intent is to provide you with a period where, wherein you may consult with uh, those in the community who uh, wish to uh, bend your ear on this or who you wish to seek advice from. Uh, certainly that is appropriate given that this bylaw has pretty broad reaching impacts across the community. Uh, as well, uh, there will be a period where our, our citizens, our residents may uh, reach out for as you heard, uh, copies of the bylaw and, and offer comments uh, through the staff channel as well at this point. And our intent is to have a, a fairly active discussion, uh, getting our sleeves rolled up and dealing with the ideas and possible revisions to the draft on the meeting of May 25th at Council to be followed uh, with a consolidation effort that the staff will make to bring forward a final draft for our consideration the June 1st council meeting. So sort of a three-step process. Tonight's the opening uh, opportunity to sort of raise the high-level concerns and to ask questions. Um, and that's what I'd like to do then. Again, I think our approach, um, we do have a resolution sort of approving the process moving forward. But I think at this point, I'd like to sort of relax the rules so that if people have questions or comments at the high level, they may make them at this point in time. So uh, with your consent, we'll, we'll uh, do that. And uh, again, you can identify with the clerk if you'd like to speak or ask questions at this point. Um, I don't think this is a, a, a significant debate point. I think the significant debate, debate point is on May 25th. So this is more about ideas, questions, exchanging information so that you feel well-informed for your own 
uh, research and consultation that you'll do with the community. Uh, do we have anyone on the speaker's list? Councillor Seiler, let's begin with you. Thank you, Mayor Todd. I guess probably my most important would be one I always get from ratepayers is Property Standards Act. And we have to, and it's sometimes it's hard to deal with and, and whatnot. So that's the only, my concern is that we make the Property Standards Act uh, clear to the ratepayers and, and how to deal with it and bring, how to bring the information to who and be fair about it. So that's probably the only one I've, I've really got that's really important to my in my books. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councillor Seiler. And who's next? Uh, Councillor Rothwell. Thank you, Mayor Todd. Through you, uh, I just uh, have a question. And of course, not being on the uh, committee, I'm wondering uh, for our upcoming meeting, just for the rest of the council, if we could get an understanding in terms of the number of complaints that, uh, on average, the committee deals with, and then by type and you know clearly I suspect that the committee is going to have a lot more uh, crucial understanding on this but I mean if all council has to uh, adopt the bylaw I think we better have an understanding about that in terms of the number of complaints on average and and what sort of complaints that we're dealing with and um, early new on council we've had a couple of complaints which I've forwarded through in terms of more property standards issues but I don't know the uh, the full extent and uh, the reason why we'd be making some of these modifications. So if we could have that clarified for the meeting uh, coming up, I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rothwell. I think the clerk would like to weigh in. So let me just set, get my 80 seconds right here so that we don't uh, get terrible feedback. Hold on. So just for information, the Property Standards Committee receives um, a report from Marita um, on a, we try and do it on a quarterly basis so that they have an understanding of what types of things that Marita is dealing with in regards to property standards. But in regards to the actual complaint, the property standards committee only deals with the appeals. And if I recollect, we have not necessarily had an appeal for at least two years, maybe two and a half years since our last appeal. However, what we do is we bring the concerns to the property standards committee and they're often the people out there that are hearing from the residents of concerns and they try and help us come together with a bylaw that we're willing to um, brought, bring forward to you council tonight. So um, as far as actual complaints, they're not necessarily dealing with them, only appeals. Okay, Councillor Rothwell, anything further? Uh, okay, just uh, thank you very much uh, through Mr. Mayor to Pat. Uh, so then the question is not necessarily then that the committee deals with then but our by law enforcement officer in terms of the number of uh, uh, matters that she is dealing with just in terms of so it's I understand the quarterly report and so on so just if if the rest of the uh, non, non committee members could see you know sort of the the, the extent of which uh, our by law enforcement officer is dealing with numbers as well as types of applications Fully, fully knowing that we're not going to any detail, but just type of complaints. I think that's the issue that I would suggest it would be appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. I think uh, the clerk would like to weigh in again. So let me get my settings right. Okay, so the clerk is indicating to me that that will be part of a report that will be uh, submitted uh, for the next meeting. Thanks for that. Thank you. Well, yeah. Uh, Councillor Richardson. Uh, th thank you. Through you, I'm just just wondering about uh, on page two of eighteen, uh, section one point two zero, inoperative vehicle. Um, I do know that that's been amended a little bit, um, only for the reason I'm just wondering if there's a significant difference between point A and point B with being unable to be operated because either there's no wheels on it or the engine's been removed. However. Point B, if I do know that, uh, obviously I do realize that it's complaint driven, but a vehicle could be totally operative and still run, but just not have valid license plates. Um, that's totally different than being deemed as inoperative legally. I under, I know what you're saying. I'm just wondering if there, I don't know if there needs to be a secondary section in there or if there needs to be something that 
limits strict, strictly like unlicensed vehicles being uh, put on display because um, I can name quite a number of different vehicles that are there that I know that were totally roadworthy and runnable, but they're not legally licensed at this point. Um, that doesn't necessarily deem them as inoperable. Maybe it's just wording and parsing grammar. I don't know, but I just thought I would mention that. That's Section 1.2. Okay, thanks, Councillor Richardson. Um, we're going to turn to uh, Marita Boyle, our uh, property standards officer, uh, to offer some comment for that. Uh, Marita, take yourself off mute and join the conversation. Yeah, so in that, I mean, yeah, we, I always deal with it as if it's not, if it doesn't have a valid val tag on it, then I, I make them either plate it or remove it. Does that help? Oh, supplemental, and thank you, Marita. Um, I just didn't know if it needed, to, I totally understand it, but if it's being deemed as an inoperative vehicle, and I, I totally, totally understand with it being, um, it needs to be roadworthy, not necessarily roadworthy, but it needs to be legally plated for the road. I'm just wondering that inoperative makes it sound like it's always a derelict vehicle instead of just having vehicles parked in the driveway without license plates. I think it's very important to have that. I'm just wondering that the actual wording that we're calling it an inoperative vehicle instead of just an unlicensed vehicle. I understand the reason for doing how you do that, but why it's done, I'm just wondering, is it too all-encompassing to have it under like A and B? It just needs to be a separate byline. Yeah, I we'll research that, Councilor Richardson. Uh, Maria, did you want to weigh in on that? I think it's better to have them both there so that we, so that we have that option of deeming them whether they're inoperable or whether they're just a vehicle that's sitting in the driveway that they failed to plate. So, so um, Councillor Richardson, is, is the point that you're making that if it's un, like the language currently is if it's unplated, we might not have covered that scenario or might not have captured that somehow? Maybe um, it's hard to describe it. Um, I guess A and B are totally very important and do need to be there. Possibly, <clears throat> uh, pardon me, possibly the word inoperative. This is the best choice of word for the bylaw. Uh, maybe it is. I'm just, I don't have a, a real issue with it. I just thought I would mention it, but not necessarily a vehicle who is unplated is inoperative. I'm just wondering if anyone can challenge that at all. I sure. understand why both points are there, but is inoperative the best word? Possibly uh, unlicensable vehicle or something different than the word inoperative. Because uh, sure. it's just, just for conversation. So, I mean, I can see your, I think I see the scenario and the clerk is saying that we'll do research on that. Uh, but you can have a car um, and could drive down the street but it's not plated, and that's that's an issue too. Absolutely correct. correct, because I do know that there are quite a number of vehicles. Uh, my apologies, sub last supplemental. No, no worries. Several several vehicles that I do know of that are totally roadworthy and nice looking vehicles that have no plates on them. They're not deemed inoperative. Legally, right. so they're not road necessarily roadworthy, but they're not really inoperative. It's not like they have the on blocks or the engine's been built in or anything untoward like that, like it's still a fully functioning vehicle. And I'm just wondering if inoperative is the most appropriate word for the bylaw. Okay, we'll, we'll take that under advisement. It's not on your head. Thank you, uh, Councillor Richardson. Um, looks like Councillor Andreessen is next. Councillor Andreessen. Mr. Andreessen, are you with us? We're not hearing anything. Sorry about that. Try it again. Um, there we are. Uh, yes, uh, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, my questions or my comments are around um, pages 14 and 15 of the actual bylaw proposal, and um, it's around 6.04 to 6.07. And it seems to me that there's a, obviously a very heavy responsibility 
uh, for our bylaw um, officer to enforce this new bylaw. And um, some people could be very offended by this type of in law enforcement and find any kind of comments or suggestions to be quite unwelcome. Um, and I'm just wondering about the safety of our bylaw officer in the event that, um, you know, people are becoming so offended that they perhaps don't want to um, engage in, I would say, you know, appropriate discussion around this type of matter. And I wondered if there's any concern on the bylaw officer from, from her perspective. First, I think we'll call on the clerk to comment on this and then she could decide if she uh, w wishes to redirect to others. So just let me set, get my settings right here so that the clerk can. Okay. So that's a, an excellent question and comment. Um, we're very fortunate that Marita has a, a demeanor and the ability to approach most of these um, properties and residents in a very professional manner. Um, however, you're absolutely right. We run in um, to situations um, occasionally where there is discomfort and um, Marita has concerns for herself as she does approach properties. So we have asked for the assistance of the OPP or a fellow building department staff member to assist her. We would never send Marita out to a situation where they're thinking that there is going to be um, concern. If upon approaching a resident that right away it's identified and we weren't necessarily prepared for that, um, and Marita can follow up with this, but I think she has practices and protocol in mind that if she's at all uncomfortable for her safety, she walks away and we either deal with it by correspondence or we ask for assistance. Thanks. I think I'll allow uh, Ms. Boyle to weigh in on this one too. Uh, Marita, did you want to say a few words on this one? Basically, Pat answered it, and, and yes, I if I feel myself in danger at all, I just come back to the office. I get either one of the building guys to go with me. Most often, I just go down to the OPP station, and they attend with me with no questions asked. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Dreesen, any supplemental there? Uh, yes, thank you, um, Mayor Kaysenberg, through you. Um, I just wondered, again, I'm, I just wondered out loud about this as we have some discussion. Is that something that should be part of the written information in this, that, um, you know, when cases of residents not being appropriate during these types of discussion, that there could be police involvement or backup um, I just, I just feel that it's important that we are looking out for our staff and that residents are aware that if things were to get out of hand, that we have the ability to use, uh, police enforcement to support this process. Just wondered if that could be something added or, um, in consideration, just a thought. So, so we can have a look at that, but, um, the intent here largely is that, that, you know, this is a bylaw that has associated with it uh, best practices that are not necessarily enshrined in the bylaw text. Um, I think, you know, you heard that part of the ambition, uh, should we decide to approve this bylaw uh, in the near future, is that there'll be a strong public education component. And that education component will talk about those practices and remind people that, that um, uh, that this person, the, these people, not just one, but two uh, moving forward are in the service of the municipality. And uh, sometimes they uh, bring unpleasant news, but it's it's never personal. It's, it's about the, the acting to comply with the community's expectations and, um, and should they become uncivil about it. Uh, there are protocols and practices that uh, we have in place to protect our people. So, um, I think it's noted, uh, we'll give consideration to whether that should be there, but it may be that it's more appropriate for the, the sort of policies and, or the practices and the protocols for this. Okay, um, CAO Snell, did you want to weigh in on this at all? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, basically, I think you just answered 
um, the, sort of the question at the at the end of your um, talk, but um, we do have um, violence in the workplace policies for for all our staff members because unfortunately, um, it, it goes beyond our bottom enforcement officer that, that may um, see these sort of incidences. So we do have uh, we do have lots of policies around violence in the workplace uh, and and practices in place for when staff. Um, may feel threatened or are threatened and, and how that's handled. So I um, certainly can share that again with council if that's something that they're interested in, but we we do have this um, as part of our health and safety documentation and we are required to um, review it annually. Thanks, CEO Snell. Um, any other uh, individuals in council wishing to ask questions or um, clarify any information at this point about our process or events? See none, then um, we have a resolution. I think it needs to be tweaked a little bit, so we'll just do it first here. Um, so just bear with me for a second while I read this carefully, uh, given what we've said so far. So I think the resolution should read, and, and let's see where this goes, uh, that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth debate and review the draft property standards bylaw at its May 25th, 2020 council meeting for the purposes of refinement. And further, that the draft be amended if necessary to integrate changes and additions resulting from council and legal counsel's review with the final document prepared for consideration at the June 1st, 2020 meeting of council. Does that seem okay? Um, give me a second. Okay, so um, my uh, mover, my, I'll, I'll approach Councillor Anstead. Are you prepared to uh, serve as mover for that? Councillor Anstead, you with us? Yes, I would move that. Okay, thank you. And uh, Councillor Behrens, would you second that? Yes, I will second that. Thank you. Okay, uh, any discussion or debate on the resolution, which largely is a procedural resolution directing Council's next steps? Okay, seeing none, let's have that vote. We are missing the vote from Councillor Duncan. Councillor Duncan, what say you? I'm in favor. It never came up for me, though. Okay, thank you. Uh, we may have an e-scribe uh, loss of connectivity there for you. Uh, okay, so that is carried. Uh, Councillors, remember that essentially what this is uh, suggesting is that there is an opportunity from this point to the May 25th meeting for you to consult with those in the community that you believe would like to hear from you about this. Um, so I encourage us all to uh, take that opportunity uh, to let our people hear and learn about the, the positions before us. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you to our experts. Thanks for um, Mr. Podnowitz and Ms. Boyle attending tonight and, and being our subject matter experts. We are glad you came. Sorry we didn't get to hear from you, Ed, but um, we'll find that opportunity, I'm sure. All right, uh, that brings us to item uh, 5.2.6, which seeks council's approval to amend a previous bylaw on board and committee's procedures for the purposes of enabling electronic meetings, a permission that is now granted for these meetings as a result of changes introduced in Ontario's Municipal Emergency Act 2020. This item is in many ways a parallel effort to our revisions to council's procedural bylaw on March 23rd, 2020. I'll ask our clerk to explain this one. Um, I'll let, just let me get the settings right here. Um, so Clerk Fairfells will be up, please. Council, as um, you may or may not um, be aware that we do have a procedural bylaw for council uh, committee meetings and regular meetings. 
but we also then have a separate procedural bylaw for boards and committees. So at the time in March, when council did consider the amendment to, to your procedural bylaw, that only provided the opportunity for virtual council meetings um, and committee meetings for North Perth Council. As this um, COVID-19 is, is continuing on and we're certainly at an uncertain opportunity as to when our boards and committees could meet again, they're asking for an opportunity. So tonight what I would like council to do is consider amending their procedural bylaws similar to your own, providing them uh, a WebEx opportunity to meet similar to what we're doing tonight and then hopefully working with our IT staff, we're going to have to work on a way that we can still make these meetings public. So the, the opportunity for the meeting is awesome and we can do that very easily as we know um, with the next step in working with them and coming up with um, whether it be a live streaming on YouTube, we're not quite sure, it's our homework to be left, but tonight I promise the, the chairs and committee recording secretaries that are um, responding back to these committees as to how they want to meet and they want to move forward with what's happening, um, this would be our first step. So tonight the amendment is for your consideration. Okay, thank you, Clerk Fairfelt. Um, I believe we do have some people who are uh, either having questions or wish to comment on this matter. So what's the speaking order, Clerk Fairfelt? Okay, so first we'll hear from uh, Councillor Andreessen. Hi, thank you. Uh, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, I'm just looking at the actual bylaw and I'm just confused if I could get clarification. Um, in Under the definitions, it says uh, 27, electronic participation, although electronic's not spelled correctly. Um, the final sentence there, it says, the chair shall not be permitted to participate electronically at any meeting. Is that correct? Could I get some clarification on that? Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Leanne. I think we'll turn this over to Clerk Fairfeld. So I took note of that too. I'm sure, just my own comments, the intent is that uh, the provincial legislation mandates that the chair must be essentially on site in the sort of physical line of sight of the recording secretary or clerk. But uh, um, do you, do, would you like to speak to someone, Clerk Fairfeld? Or? All right, so Clerk Fairfield is going to further comment. Let me just uh, change my settings here. Um, and thank you for that uh, typo. We'll definitely fix that right away. Not a, not a concern. But um, Mayor Kaysenberg is absolutely right. As part of what was legislated through the, the Emergency Act is that the chair or the mayor or whoever's presiding over a meeting has to be present in the location. So for instance, if it's the library board meeting, the library chair or who, whoever steps in her position in her absence, along with the recording secretary, would be at the meeting place and other members of the committee or board would be allowed to participate by an electronic means. Uh, Councillor Andreessen, anything further on that one? No, thank you, that's great. Thank you for the clarification. Okay. Councillor Richardson is next. He's okay, so we've satisfied his question. All right. And yeah. Councillor Anstead. Thanks, uh, Mayor Kaysenberg, through you. Thanks very much, Pat, for your report. Um, it's very well done. And obviously our committees, we want to get them back working again to uh, to get the continue the good work that they're doing. Um, I just had a question for, the, I'm wondering if you could make mention for people that maybe don't have access to reliable internet that sit on our committees. Um, I know we've had some issues here at council as well with some councillors that have unreliable internet. So I'm just wondering if there's some other options that we could provide to those individuals. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Neil. Um, let's turn this over to Clerk Fairfelds for some comments. She, her face looked a little squinchy there, so I think you, you touched a sore point. Uh, let me just uh, let turn this over to her. Give so, um, as I'm sure you've guessed, this is new. We've sort of just started 
working on this last Thursday when, you know, boards and committees keep asking when we're going to meet and how can we proceed. So um, I'm sure you guessed it was a rush job. So the actual um, ironing out all of these details with the IT staff has not been done yet. For instance, number one, how we're going to put it out publicly. Um, and I can't speak for the IT team, but I'm guessing for an individual board member. And this is all about the social distancing and not only allowing um, individuals all sitting in the library having a meeting. So we're trying to avoid that coming together. But just for instance, maybe um, a couple of them would um, find a position here at the municipal office. They're finding difficulty with, um, with the ability to sign up to or have the internet or we may find other locations. So it's just trying to avoid all of them coming together and I'm sure working with the IT staff will come up with something. Anything further, Councillor Anstead? Yeah, thank you, uh, through you again, and, and thanks, Pat. No, I wasn't expecting to have all the answers figured out tonight, um, and obviously it's at the very beginning of the process, but again, just something that we wanna keep in mind so that we can accommodate all of the people on our committees. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Anstead. And I can share certainly that um, I've, I've participated in meetings of the Board of Health, which were run just by, by teleconference, and um, they, they were very effective. So um, the, the possibilities of taking that step down and using telephone conferencing if we need to um, is always available through the WebEx technologies that we have. So we can use the, the all-in phone line to bring in people. Um, it's not quite the, the same equitable access that's the issue on paper, but um, thanks for your point, it's, it's very well made. Um, so, Councillor Rothwell, would you like to uh, take the uh, take the opportunity to speak as well? Uh, thanks, uh, Mayor Todd, and uh, question through to uh, Pat. Thanks for the report, uh, Pat. I take it uh, you know based on our earlier conversation regarding uh, planning updates and what we're going to do for public meetings and so on, is that this uh, bylaw would be the foundational work, say for the committee of adjustments. So I mean, they could meet electronically. It's just a matter that they may or may not like until we come to a decision in terms of planning act applications, how we're going to, to deal with those. Uh, we're, this bylaw would allow the committee of adjustment, for example, to meet electronically. It's just a matter that the second step would be the policy or procedure put in place to allow for planning act applications to be dealt with. Is that correct? Uh, Pat is saying the word exactly in the council chambers. So yes, thank you, Councilor Rothwell, exactly. All right, anything further? Thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, okay, so I have two resolutions before me. Um, I do express actually the same concern that, that Leanne did, um, Councillor uh, Andreessen, pertaining to the wording of the, the, the chair shall not be permitted to participate electronically. Uh, the chair is permitted to participate electronically, but must be at the meeting location. Is that the way to look at this? Otherwise, I'm in trouble because I'm participating electronically. So we, we, there's a little bit of ambiguity there. That I'm not sure how we address. But, uh, yes, yes. Right. Okay. So, so the clerk and I are having a discussion in the chamber about the possibility of making minor word modifications to uh, make the point that um, Many participants may participate remotely using electronic technologies, but the chair is not permitted to participate remotely, but must be on location of where the meeting location is deemed to be held. Something like that. That's our intent. That's certainly our intent. Okay, so I have, Leanne agrees. Thank you, Councillor Andreessen, appreciate it. Um, so, uh, let's go through the uh, the two pieces here. There's a resolution and a bylaw. The resolution reads that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth adopt bylaw 64 2020 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 150 2018 being a bylaw to establish a policy to govern the calling, place, and proceedings of committees of the Municipality of North Perth and to provide public notice of meetings. Can I call on Councillor Duncan to serve as our mover for that one? So moved. <clears throat> and seconded, can I call on Councillor Johnston for that one? Thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I would second that. Thank you. 
Any discussion or debate further? Let's press that to the chat box. Okay, seeing none, let's have that vote. And we have everyone in and that is carried, thank you. So now to the bylaw, which as I said, um, we intend to make minor modifications to the last sentence uh, of 27, electronic participation. Uh, so council, please note that our intention is to revise a little bit per what was discussed earlier. Um, but here's the resolution that bylaw number 64-2020 being a bylaw to amend bylaw number 150-2018 be introduced, read, and considered read a first, second, and third time, and be finally passed and said by, be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on, on uh, Councillor, um, or sorry, Deputy Mayor Kellum to uh, move that one? Yes, I will move that motion. Thank you. And Councillor Richardson, would you serve as our seconder for that? I will second that motion. Thank you. Uh, any discussion or debate? If you're interested, please indicate through the uh, chat uh, function in the electronic tool. And we're not seeing any, so let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you, councillors. We have no report from our uh, manager of environmental services this evening. That brings us to item 5.6 and specifically item 5.6.1. Council is asked to provide direction related to the matter of constructing a berm adjacent to the North Perth Trail in Lister, in a portion of Lister. Uh, Mr. Couch, our manager of operations, will lead us through this. Thank you, Mayor Kiesenberg, members of council. Um, this request came up within the last two weeks and it was really from two sources. Primarily it was from the developer, Wallace View Developments. And I've given some pictures to show uh, or drawings to show general location. It's the property adjacent to the trail, adjacent to the two factories, LTI and Erie Meats. It's the highlighted blue area. We're going to call it Maitland River Estates too. It's just below the new development that is under construction right now. And the wish of the, uh, of the developer, because previous studies have shown that noise attenuation is important in the area, is to construct a berm. And the berm is a large berm. It's over 400 meters and it would be 20 feet high. And it needs to be adjacent to the development according to studies that uh, have been reported to us from the developer's planner that would say that it's necessary to create that berm. So in this discussion, uh, it's understood that we have several large projects this year that are underway. Albert Street is one. And I do cite that it has 7,000 cubic meters of material that could come out of that dig. Uh, that street project could go up to 20,000 cubic meters. And in fact, those are the amounts that would create a berm like this. The developer is understanding of this. And uh, as part of the contract for Albert Street, the contractor understood that it could be an outlet and approached the municipality as well. Uh, for fill. And that's where it gets a little bit more complicated. If we were to develop a berm along this property, which does not own to, uh, not currently owned by the municipality of North Perth, um, it would be an area that we would place our fill and under the requirements and legislation right now for fill handling, and Pat's got the picture in front of you there, it's the green line along the side that runs adjacent to the trail. If we were to place our material there as one of these options, uh, we would need to own that because it would work for the usage of uh, a trail or a recreational or commercial area as opposed to residential area. So that's the issue in front of us. Um, I can talk more about costs and benefits later, but that's the issue. Um, the berm itself, the developer wants to construct. It couldn't construct independently from us. However, there might be some efficiencies uh, in taking material from the municipality. If the material does come from the municipality, then we would own the berm area. I mentioned complex issues, not that complex, but there, was, there were some considerations that need to happen here in terms of talking with our planner and our director of uh, recreation you know, in terms of the naturalized space, the usage, the aesthetics. Is it acceptable? 
and, uh, and we had a few meetings that discussed all of those issues and implications. So we, we are very much responding to this request here. Um, what has happened in that area, I do, if we keep panning down, we have a picture or photograph of the, the tree line, which is really a fence line that's grown up over many years uh, with some aspen and some shrubs in it. Um, and the developer has removed the trees on their side of the line. It's a little deceptive. This picture should represent about a 10 to 15 foot wide strip of trees with the center line being right in the center and half the trees would be removed along that alignment. And that would allow the physical construction of this attenuation berm. I think the only thing I can follow up with and end with on this is that there will be a planning process. And I know uh, our planner is not in attendance any longer in the meeting, but in, in speaking with him and also the county planner, uh, there's pre-consultation that's being asked of the county to initiate this process. The construction itself is in advance of it. Uh, that consultation process is to begin, and as I said, the county's been consulted and are aware that there are items going on and some uh, preliminary information has been given. And that is really where we sit with the, uh, with the works. So I've explained that and I'll just go over the three options then in front of council based on creating a berm in this area. The first one is our eventual ownership of that berm area. Again, 20 meters wide, uh, five meters high, um, and we would own what is currently on the, the private side of the line because of the usage of the material. And it would mean we would, we would create that berm or the developer would create it at their cost and, and gain fulfilled probably from our work sites as well as their own work sites uh, being the subdivision right there. If that were to happen, we'd have lots of considerations there. Uh, we'd probably enter into an agreement, a legal agreement as to how that could happen. We would also uh, request that you know drainage be maintained. These have, discussions have happened, but also that a naturalization and planting plan would be in place for the berm, et cetera. So that's us using it as an outlet for our fill and therefore needing to own it and therefore owning it in the future. Second option is the developer owns the berm and constructs it independent of the municipality with their own materials. Uh, council would need to authorize the removal of the municipal trees the remaining trees as they need to remove those for uh, constructing that berm. So that's the second developer owns, but the trees would go, things would be reinstated. We would move through a subdivision process and probably still require naturalization and other activities. The last option would be that the developer builds the berm um, and would do so on their own property and not impact our trees at that edge and it would move through the subdivision application process and uh, we'd review it through that process as well. So three different stages of our involvement, the last being none, only making sure that there's no impact to our, uh, to our lands. So I'll end the presentation there other than the, the financial aspects. The Albert Street Trunk Sewer Project was contracted out knowing that they'd have to dispose of the materials, the contractors. So that's already bid into the contract. They have asked, because there is a large amount here, um, to f if we could assist in finding outlets for them. So that's why I can't say that there's a financial benefit, but they have expressed a need to try and find other options, um, and they are looking for them. So that's why there's no financial benefit. There could be a financial benefit as we tender out Road 84, and if this berm was available for us to take materials to it and they pass the um, sampling restrictions, uh, that it could be used in that area as well. So that's the multiple issues in front of council, I would ask that the CAO and perhaps the director of parks could comment on, on aspects that I may have uh, not included as well as part of the staff report. Okay, so um, let me just sort of talk about the process moving ahead here. We have a resolution uh, that council considers the three options that Mr. Couch has explained and then provide direction to staff for how they should proceed uh, I assume your intention, uh, Mr. Couch, is that council will, will pick a recommended option for you tonight, which will allow you to move forward. Is that, is that your goal? Yes, that's right. Uh, we have our dig that is ongoing on Albert Street. We could start bringing materials to it if they decided to bring our materials to the berm area. Um, but beyond that, as I said, and the CAO might be able to comment a, a bit on this as well, we'd have to proceed that probably with an agreement of some sort that we would understand exactly what's going on, what quantities, what testing, et cetera, uh, would be done in the area. Very good, thank you. Um, CAO Snell, did you wanna weigh in on this one? 
I, I think um, Lyndon's right. Is uh, probably no matter what um, decision council makes, we'll need to enter into. Um, I guess option three we probably don't need to, but options one and two we probably do need to enter into some form of of agreement with with the developer regardless because um, even option two he's removing our trees and we'd want some sort of assurances that they would they be put back and certainly option one we'd want to have um, as well as he would I would think require that the agreement be signed for for the types of topsoils or or fill that's going on his his property. Okay, and um, is anyone else from staff expected to speak to this? I think um, um, Ms. Gangle, do you have anything to weigh in on this one? Uh, nope, just uh, echoing uh, what um, Chris and Lyndon have said. Uh, our emphasis is making sure that the naturalization in the tree uh, area is um, replaced if it needs to. We need to make sure that that naturalized area is still there for our trail users and uh, that whole um, essence that we've we've worked hard at for our uh, our trails and uh, just our staff if we were to own that we would make sure uh, that we're maintaining it uh, and making those agreements as well as just the municipality would be very clear with the property owners with regards to uh, the permit level and response okay. Thanks, Amy. Okay, so uh, council uh, questions or comments at this point? I think uh, Councillor Rothwell is first on our speakers list. Uh, Thanks, Mayor Todd. Uh, and through to uh, Lyndon and uh, our manager, uh, Lyndon, as well as uh, Seattle Snell. In the report, uh, you mentioned specifically about an application has been received by the county for plan subdivision here, and there's been conversations and consultation. When do we anticipate that this application is going to actually come forward to, for public meetings at the on the subdivision? Uh, thank you. Uh, I wrote that pre-consultation was requested, I thought, in here, and I believe that's the only uh, phase that we're at in terms of the county's perspective on the project. Um, the subdivision plan, although drafted in the images that you see in front of me, I think have been submitted as part of the pre-consultation request. Um, that's in the hands of the developer, but they're obviously moving quickly. Uh, I can't speak to the timing, but these uh, drawings and this discussion with the county has happened over last week. Uh, supplemental, uh, Mayor, if I may. Yeah, go ahead. What I'm concerned about here is is that uh, there was a subdivision that uh, the municipality and the county dealt with uh, immediately to the east, and it took years uh, and uh, at the time an Ontario Municipal Board hearing uh, to uh, deal with that uh, plan subdivision and there was uh, great uh, uh, issues of concern raised by both LTI and at the time Campbell Soup. So this property is even closer and I'm concerned that uh, what we're seeing here is a proposal which has not gone to the public and we haven't heard what the adjacent property owners have to say, and frankly, I'm not necessarily in favor that we move forward on the basis of, of a concept plan when we haven't, we don't even know for sure that this uh, berm is, well, if the subdivision is going to be approved and if the, the berm is actually going to be required in this exact location. So I'm, I'm really concerned about the, the timing on this. I know from our perspective, uh, the amount of fill we're dealing with is, is significant. And if you can put it somewhere, why not put it somewhere where it's specifically needed? But I'm just concerned that we're not really right in the uh, right time frame to deal with this application uh, at this moment. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Councillor Jarrett. Yes, thank you, Mayor Kaysenberg. Um, I would share some of Councillor Rothwell's concerns on that, having been through the process the same as him from the different side of the table on uh, the other application that he was speaking of. My, I don't have any trouble with either two or three. Um, that's the options two or three. It, from the photograph, it looks like there is a lot of um, shrub bush that would give us the opportunity to clean it up, perhaps make it look a little nicer when it's near the trail. But that being said, um, my concern is that 
the fail as much as it is our issue it isn't our issue these are two separate issues and the concern about whether the berm is in the right place or not to begin with I agree with the pre consultation but I just have concerns with the timing of this application thank you okay thank you anyone else wish to speak on this matter okay so CAO Snell would you like to offer comment here so on the concerns expressed by both Council Rothwell and Council Barron's were certainly discussed by staff we could be placing fill into a berm that may never actually be used for the purpose of residential development depending on the planning approval process so that would be I think more of the developers risk because at the opportunity for us to put land or our fill in there would have to be deeded to us as my understanding under the current requirements of the legislation so I certainly agree with Council's concerns and and certainly I've had lots of discussions with with Lyndon around this issue we could be we could be several years before we see the actual development of housing in this area so that's certainly why we're bringing this to council tonight of course as you know the developers putting a tremendous amount of pressures on us for us to make a decision but we felt it was not within our privy to do so okay so I'm picking up some reluctance to the most interventionist of the three options which is option one we understand the fact that we're going to have a lot of material but I'm also picking up that I think it's a fair point that these are unrelated topics in our community it's coincidental that this has happened at this point so I'm not I'm I mean part of my job here is to try to steer us to giving the staff some direction or letting us sit without any action at all at this point which is another option anyone wish to express their preferred approach at this point counselors please indicate to the chat function to the clerk okay we're not seeing a lot of indication there okay so Dave Dave Johnson Mr. Johnson would you like to comment on this thank you mayor Todd and and a question maybe to Lyndon and Chris if I think you said we're entering into an agreement with this and if we were to enter an agreement that we put the Albert Street fill there but the subdivision never goes ahead would it not be our responsibility then to clean it up I guess I guess at my point part of the agreement would be that that 20 meters has to be transferred to us and that would become our property we could do whatever we want with it I think the danger is if we left it in the developers name you're right Dave that could be that could be our our issue and could become a very expensive proposition to relocate the fill once it's placed there anything supplemental Dave no I think I don't mind option number one actually because then I think we control that 20 meters and and I also agree with Councillor Rothwell that we are jumping the gun somewhat on this but I also think it's an opportunity to save a fair bit of money not only for us but also for the development to try and spur this development along as well so I would be okay with option number one thank you the other counselors wish to weigh in at this point my gut tells me that perhaps we should defer this by a week just to sort of hear our thoughts about this I appreciate that there may be some pressure here so anyone has a different opinion 
I'd be happy to uh, hear it at this point. Okay, um, uh, Councillor Andreessen, did you want to weigh in? Actually, I, my preference would be to defer for one week as well, just to do some more thinking about it. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else want to weigh in? Councillor Rothwell? Alan, did you want to weigh in? Rothwell? Can't come. Uh, oh, there we are. Uh, yes, I think the benefit of uh, if council does agree to defer, we can ask staff uh, to have conversation with the county and the applicant to give us some specific time frame in which we think uh, we'll be looking at this application coming to uh, a public meeting. So at least uh, we have um, public involvement to, in terms of uh, the application so it doesn't come as a surprise. Because what I'm really concerned about is this, is that if council were to agree to this uh, and and bill starts coming into this area, we'll say, well, what's that, what's that going there for? And you're going to say, oh, it's going to be for burn for the subdivision. They'll say, well, we haven't even seen the subdivision. So you, this is almost uh, sort of a pre-approval. I don't think that's anyone's intention here, but I don't want us to uh, be railroaded into something which puts us potentially in a bad light here. So I think if we have a deferral, to give staff the opportunity to find out when that date is, then I, I would be a lot more comfortable moving forward on that basis because then we can ask uh, Lyndon, uh, can ask the, uh, uh, the uh, our contractor when Phil is actually going to start coming uh, out uh, and potentially onto this site. Thank you. Um, uh, Deputy Mayor Kellen. Yes, through Mayor Kaysenberg, I uh, totally agree with what uh, Councilor Rothwell said, and I believe we should defer this. Um, I'm getting a sense that that's the first action we should at least consider. Uh, do we need to be active about it and say that we're deferring it for a week, Clerk Fairfelds? Yes. So uh, the, the clerk is giving advice to us that uh, we should consider a resolution being explicit about our intent to defer with a return date. So um, I, uh, what I have uh, drafted here is a resolution for our consideration that the Council of the Municipality of North Perth defer uh, this item, item 5.64, uh, until Council's meeting um, on May 11th, 2020 with expectations that, that staff will undertake some additional analysis. Seem reasonable? The clerk? Yes, okay. Um, so um, I think that puts us in Councillor Rothwell's uh, shoes to, would you serve as a mover for that? I so move, yes. Thank you. Councillor Seiler, would you serve as our seconder for that? Yes, I would second it, Todd, with one question. I would like to know how the fill is going to be transported there, on what road it's going to be taking, and what kind of damage might be done. Okay, so that's stuff that could be put into the report that staff will bring back for our meeting next week. Okay, so that's understood. Um, I'll Thank call you. the seconder then. Thanks, Councillor Seiler. Thank you. Um, yes. So any further discussion or debate on this resolution? I'll just remind you our intent is uh, different than what is showing in East Scribe. Mr. Barnes, did you wish to uh, join in on this one? Um, yes, thank you, Mayor Todd. If we're bringing back a report, um, I personally do not agree with option one of us owning the property. So if that is um, the intent of other council members, I'd like to see a little bit more information and the legality of the long-term maintenance of properties um, that were developed 
um, simply for one single land developer as opposed to for the betterment of the entire community. Um, I don't know if we have any other local examples of things like that, but that seems like going could potentially be a legal light nightmare as far as municipalities concerned. And I'm speaking more of the long-term liability um, and maintaining the berm. Thank you. Okay, I'm just, um, what I'm thinking, um, uh, Councillor Behrens, is that perhaps we add an amendment to the resolution that's on the floor that gives somewhat more direction to staff on, on how to deal with um, the particular issues. So I've, um, I've drafted a couple of words, but I might need a little bit of collaboration with you on this. And further that the report consider the long-term liability and legality of option one. Well, I don't know if council's going to approve of option one. Like I had said, um, I believe that two or three, like the municipality simply in my mind should not own the property. So, but if we're bringing back another report and we're deferring it and giving people ideas, Councillor Seiler brought up a point that he would like to see in the report. I'm just saying, if we're really gonna consider option one, then I would like to see something about the legality and the reason for ownership for an individual landowner. Thank you. Okay. So um, perhaps we don't need a, uh, an amendment so much as an understanding from staff of the intent of, uh, of various councillors who've weighed in on this matter. Is that correct? Do you feel that that's acceptable? Okay, so um, no, I, I think the clerk and deputy clerk have been making notes uh, they can review the video of this uh, meeting for extracting the points that you'd like to be sure of in the report. And I think I see a, a commitment from the staff to, to take care of addressing those particular concerns. Um, so is, are there any further comments? Okay, so just remember what we've done is we've, we've revised the resolution that was proposed to us uh, to defer this item until council's meeting um, on May 11th with an expected report from staff addressing several of the matters that council has uh, brought up to the, um, let's, uh, let's see if we can have that vote. Okay, that's great, thank you. Um, now, Let's, I, I, Mayor Todd made a boo-boo and uh, neglected item 5.4, which is rather important actually. So let's go back to item 5.4 councillors and with my apologies. Item 5.4.1 seeks council's approval of a bylaw permitting temporary borrowing of funds from our financial institution should we need to, uh, to support operations and cash flow. Um, this is a matter that is continued back before council uh, each year, as I understand it from the treasurer. And so um, I will read the resolution into the record for our consideration. And bylaw number 63-2020 being a bylaw to authorize the borrowing of money to meet 2020 operating expenditures of the Council of the Municipal of North Perth be introduced, read and considered ready for second and third time and be finally passed and the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation and it looks like Councillor Andreessen, would you be willing to support uh, that as our mover? Yes, I'll make that motion. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and Councillor Anstead, would you second that? Yes, I'll second that. Okay, any discussion or debate, please indicate your intention towards that uh, to the clerk through the chat window. Okay, uh, Councillor Rothwell. Thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. I presume we caught the typo in the recommendation that that should be to, uh, in the second line, uh, money to meet the 20, 2019 should read 2020. Is that correct? Yes, on the resolution that I have, it reads 2020. So it's saying from the report, it said 2019. Thanks. Yeah. So in the paperwork that I have, it says 2020. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, let's have that vote.
That is carried, thank you. We have no indications of reports tonight from our fire chief as item 5.7, which brings us to agenda item six. For item 6.1, counselors, are there any reports you would like to ask staff or of our committees? We request the opportunity to speak. Uh, please so indicate in the chat feature of the web conferencing tool. Seeing no indication of that, uh, we have received, oh, hold on, the clerk. Councillor Rothwell, did you wish to speak here? Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I had asked uh, uh, in an email there through to uh, CEO Snell if we could uh, look at uh, an update in terms of uh, progress and uh, expected timelines for the uh, implementation uh, plans for our strategic plan as well as the uh, departmental business plans when uh, council is expected to uh, uh, to see those uh, so I'm just asking for a report that's going to give us sort of a progress update so uh, where we're at with respect to strategic plan uh, implementation thank you thank you um, CAO Snell did you want to uh, weigh in on this at this point Uh, yeah, I can provide a brief update tonight. We can um, maybe provide something um, as a follow-up. But um, I received the, the draft implementation plan from, from Interthink on March the 3rd. Um, we had a couple comments back. And, and frankly, the biggest one is, um, and it's, a, it's the same thing we've been dealing with as a staff, um, even with the budget process. The first year of the implementation plan had way too many projects on it. So we were struggling with on how to prioritize those projects because um, although I commend my department heads for attempting, there's no humanly possible way they could have completed all the first year implementation. So I, I uh, made comments back to Mark that within a, within a week or so, it was March the 10th. My last correspondence from Mark was on March the 13th. And then of course, um, COVID happened and we're really, it's just been, it's just sort of been left. Um, behind at, at this point and with the time advancing on it even um, enhances my concern that we, we will not be able to complete year one uh, implementation just based on um, today's new realities. I think the other um, comment I have was we do have the um, as of early March too we did have the sort of the, the design and template for the business department plans, but um, of course, department heads haven't been able to even have a discussion about, about going forward at this point. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and uh, Deputy Mayor Kelly? Yes, thank you uh, through you, Mayor Kaysenberg. I don't know if it's a report, but just maybe some communication with regards uh, with the Midwestern uh, property out north on 86. I've had several, several conversations with landowners that are around with just what is going on out there, uh, whether it's police uh, presence, uh, ambulance, firefighters, our own employees, um, just a reassurance so that all of council was on board with just what is happening with that, that property. If I could have something like that moving on. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor Kellum. Um, shortly, you'll have an opportunity to hear that, so uh, stay tuned. Okay, uh, any further on uh, 6.1? Okay, seeing none, uh, we have received no items of correspondence beyond that already shared for Council's disposition, disposition, which means that we're at item 8 on our agenda, which allows Council to consider and enact bylaws. We've enacted a few already tonight, so uh, we don't have any additional that are targeted for this slot in the agenda. That brings us to item nine on our agenda. Are there any notices of motion from councillors attending this evening? So please so indicate in the chat box to the clerk. Seeing no indication of that, that brings us to item 10 on our agenda. For item 10.1, are there any announcements that would be of benefit to our community or that reflect well on North Perth at this time? Again, if you'd like to speak, please so indicate in the web chat window. Councillor Andreessen. 
Hi, through you, um, Mayor Kaysenberg, thank you for this opportunity. Um, it has been shared in the media that the Listowel Agricultural Society has announced that the Listowel Fair will not be conducted in 2020, and we're looking forward to hopefully being able to conduct a fair for our residents in 2021. Uh, that has been reported in the media as well. We're, we're saddened by that, but we certainly want to make sure that our community is safe and um, hope to pick up um, where we left off uh, in next year, of course. The other thing that I want to share, if it's okay, I just want to um, provide a big thanks out to our recreation department. I know that our interim manager of recreation, Amy Gangle, is joining us at the moment. And um, I know that uh, our residents are practicing social distancing in, in a very appropriate way. And we are finding the trails being, being used in, in responsible ways, I think. I'm certainly seeing that reported through social media. And I think it's really you know, commendable to our recreation department for doing such a great job with those trails so that we can continue to enjoy them. So. I just want to let you know how much our uh, municipality appreciates that work. Thank you very much, Amy. Thank you, um, Councillor Gibson. And, and now I believe uh, Ms. Gangle has a comment as well. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Anderson. Uh, definitely our staff are very passionate about our uh, amenities and they understand how much our trails are being used and they're very conscious to make sure that uh, they're out there trying to make them as safe as they possibly can and uh, so thank you for that recognition. Um, just additional announcement that uh, this week is also a reminder of mental health week. Um, we're sharing information on our social medias. It becomes a little bit more prominent at this time with everything that's going on and the importance for all of us to support each other, be positive, optimistic, uh, encourage people wherever we possibly can um, and support each other through this. And so this week we can just emphasize that message a little bit more. Thanks, Ms. Gangle. I need to take myself off mute. And now the clerk has a comment. Just let me get my things up uh, so we don't have that nasty feedback in the chamber. Hold on. Okay, so just further to Amy's comment about this being Mental Health Week, I'd also like to recognize, um, despite what's going on in the world, that this is actually Emergency Preparedness Week as well. Um, not that we haven't gone through enough, but um, working with our um, Community Emergency Coordinator, Todd McCone, this week you will find that there is notices put into the local newspapers, as well as each day there's going to be an opportunity to use social media to put some word out there as well. So just recognizing Emergency Preparedness Week as well. Thank you, Clerk Fairfelds. Are there any further announcements for the benefit of our community? Okay, seeing none, uh, we are now at agenda item 11. We have one matter to consider in a closed session of council this evening. I will uh, read into the record the uh, proposed resolution to enable that. This committee proceed in camera at 8.58 p.m. to address a matter pertaining to a proposed or pending acquisition sale of land for municipal or local board purpose regarding property described as concession 7 n part lot 25 n part lot 26 and and dt lot 27 north perth a lot of little numbers and letters in there but sorry about that um so can i call on um councillor barons to uh, serve as our mover for that yes thank you mayor todd i will move that thank you and councillor duncan will you serve as our seconder for that I will second that. Thank you. Any discussion or debate on this motion to move in camera? Seeing none, let's have that vote. And that is carried. Thank you. So, Council, we will um, adjourn from public session 
uh, to enter closed session. At this time, we invite uh, all those who've attended through WebEx who have not been uh, advised to remain for this session uh, to please exit the meeting and or physical spaces where you might hear uh, the proceedings of the meeting. And we convene this in about five minutes time. There's some technology things we have to do set ourselves up for this in camera session. So council, please stay with us. Take, take a short break.
me a second and bring it over here. Uh, and jump in. Looks like it's okay. We have the REC PC in the New York Times, so it looks like we're back into open session. Um, I will advise um, the community. Can anyone test to see if we're on YouTube? Matt? Matt, are we on YouTube? Is it is it back and alive? It is? Okay, very good. So. Uh, further to our closed session, we have nothing to report to the community at this time. Council as a mandated good practice acts near the end of its meeting to confirm all of its actions and business uh, through what is called a confirmatory bylaw. I have that draft for our consideration council. With bylaw number 65-2020 being a bylaw to confirm generally previous actions of the council of the municipality of North Perth be introduced, read and considered read a first second and third time and be finally passed and the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and the clerk and sealed with the seal of the corporation. Can I call on Councillor Richardson to serve as our mover for that? I will move that. And Councillor Rothwell, will you second that for us? I will second, yes. Thank you. Um, so, right, Councillor Johnston has declared earlier a pecuniary interest matter which means he will not be voting in this matter. Um, councillors, uh, any discussion or debate on the consent agenda motion? Seeing none, um, are there any who are opposed? Noting specifically that Councillor Johnston is not voting. Any opposed to this motion? So that is carried, thank you. Uh, so council, that brings us uh, to our adjournment point on our agenda. Uh, we have completed a lot of deliberation tonight, virtually an action on business that has come before us. Uh, before I read a motion to adjourn, is there any further business? Anyone want to raise any matters at this point? Seeing none, I have a motion for adjournment that reads as follows, that the council meeting adjourns at 10.21 p.m. to meet again for general council business on Monday, May 11, 2020 at 7 p.m. Uh, can I call on Councillor Seiler to be our mover for that? Yes, I'll move it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Andreessen is our seconder. Yes, I'll second that motion. This is a non-debatable motion, so uh, that brings us to vote point. Uh, are there any who are opposed to adjournment? Seeing no expression of same, uh, the motion is carried. Uh, council uh, is adjourned, and this council will meet again in regular council meeting Again, using our digital enabling technologies on Monday, May 11th, 2020. Thank you all, councillors. Have a good night and a good week.